I have a finished object video for you and I'm pretty stoked about this because I have a tendency whenever I have to knit a pair of something to only knit one. <laughs> I'm really bad about that, but I was determined to knit two because I really, 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 really wanted these. I first saw this pattern at Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater. I think it was 2018, maybe 2019. So, well, I think there were just two or three, but it felt like so many people had these mitts on as part of their Rhinebeck outfit. So I took note and found out the pattern. It's called the Underwing Mitts by Erica Hoiser. I hope that's how you say it. H-E-U-S-S-E-R. I think it's Hoiser. So here they are. Well, let me put them on for you because I want you to see them in all their glory. And when, well, let me show you first. Aren't these awesome? So beautiful, right? <gasps> I love them. So cool. And this year for Tell Me About Your Rhinebeck Sweater, Rhinebeck Sweaters, I was making a sweater with a butterfly on it. Actually, I have I have my puppy's version right here that I can show you. So this is a this is a mini version of the sweater that I wore for Rhinebeck. So you can see what I was going for here. They kind of go together. And when I had seen these mitts, I there are so many different projects on Ravelry, so many. And I really thought I was going to have to knit these with like a Rauma. And I have a lot of Rauma from my trip to Norway. So it's Norwegian fingering weight wool. It's really sticky. But I just didn't like any of the colors that I had. The colors that I chose were these bright rainbow colors. And I wanted something a bit more moody that sort of went with this purple yarn. I just wanted that. So I thought, well, let me just look at these projects again. So I looked at the projects and so many people were using just indie dyed sock yarn, which made me think about this project in a whole new way. I went stash diving. It didn't take me long to find my contenders. And this is just another reason why I have stash because I have had the, this skein of yarn forever. I purchased it not knowing what I was going to use it for. And I'm so, so happy that I still had it. So here are the players. I thought these were high contrast enough that they would still show the pattern, but still be fun, like indie dyed moments. And so with this, because the pattern is so large on here, I think there's no problem seeing that underwing moth, that moth there. On the back, it gets muddier. The back is supposed to be little circles. And so you can see the pattern kind of ebbs and flows. I feel like you can see the moon cycle pretty well on here as well. So I, I'm happy with the contrast. There was a couple moments when I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm losing the pattern. But it doesn't matter, it's the back anyway. So what I learned is if it's smaller scale color work, maybe don't take risks with indie dyed yarn that has darker speckles that could get lost if it's smaller scale. But with bigger scale, I feel like it works just fine. And it kind of has that moody, dirty feel that I really love in indie dyed yarns. So the Garn Stories, I think I purchased this at UIF even. I think that's how long ago I got this garnstories.de is the website and this color is I think it's called Mambo Magnolia. I'm definitely sure about Magnolia. A little unsure about the first word but I think it's Mambo Magnolia. This is the sock yarn and look I have tons left so I may put this in a de-stash so maybe you can get this kit someday. And then this is Jillian Kittles and this is so cool because the color kind of looks black but it really has some gray and purple in it. This is called Raven. So Raven is the color. And you can see here, that's so beautiful. So Jillian Kittle's Garn Stories. And then as you can see, there's a little pop of color here in the wing. And this is double stitching. So you don't have to do color work with that. And I didn't even skein this up. This is Murky Depths and this is her Harbor base and the color is Picante, which is one of her sig signature colors. I just thought it was the perfect pop on there. So I just kind of clipped a couple of strands off of that so I didn't have to totally skein it up to use it. And it was just the perfect combination. I feel like it's sort of Rhinebeck-y, Halloween-y, fall-ish. I love that I didn't have to knit any fingers the thumbs were really straightforward and I knit both of them. I just cannot believe I knit a pair of something. It's so hard for me to do. 
Thank you as always for visiting me here on Christy Glass Knits for my latest finished object. It's always a pleasure sharing them with you and I will see you next time on Christy Glass Knits. Bye.